Hi everyone! I hope you're having a great day. It's Aya Saros and today I am going to show you Akaroa Museum. Established in 1964, it's an interesting museum where you can learn about the history of Akaroa and Banks Peninsula, including the early settlement and the French influence on the village. This museum is located right next to the heritage buildings, the Akaroa Courthouse, Custom House, and oldest cottage in Akaroa, where you can also visit together with the museum. So let's take a look at the museum and the colorful history of Banks Peninsula. So right now I'm in Akaroa. Akaroa is Canterbury's oldest town that sits on Banks Peninsula southeast of Christchurch. Banks Peninsula is one of New Zealand's unique landforms formed by eruptions of volcanoes. There are stunning views everywhere with endless hills, cliffs, bays and coves. Akaroa is also popular for Hector's dolphins, which you can swim together near the harbour, and the fine collection of 19th century cottages and houses built by French settlers. It's a great destination for tourists, and I also come here whenever I want to see the breathtaking views. Alright, let's take a look at the Akaroa Museum. So the museum is open 7 days a week from 10.30am to 4.30pm, and the entry is free with a gold coin donation. It has four exhibition galleries that talk about the Māori history of the Naitahu, the French settlement and how the situation had quickly changed when the British decided to colonize New Zealand. It also has stories around how the Polynesian and European settlers made their living from the land or sea and how the environment has challenged the people who came to live in Akaroa. So let's go inside. So the first exhibition gallery explains who Naitahu people are. Basically, Naitahu are the Māori iwi of the South Island of New Zealand. They have the largest tribal area in New Zealand. When Captain Cook first saw the Akaroa Harbour in the 1770s, the Naitahu people were already well established. Pākehā began arriving in Akaroa around 200 years ago as traders, then as whalers and settlers. Here are some taxidermy birds native to New Zealand, including kereru, the wood pigeon, and paradise duck. So one of the first European settlers in Akaroa was a German named George Hempelman, who started up a whaling station and made many attempts to purchase parts of Banks Peninsula but did not succeed. And these were some of the whaling equipment used back then. There's killing lance, toggle harpoon, and flensing knife. By the 1830s, Banks Peninsula had basically become a European whaling center. And here's an explanation about how both the British and French naval men tried to purchase a Karoa in a land deal with the Māori. Just before the French settler tried to form a French colony, the British signed the Treaty of Waitangi in 1840 with Māori chiefs already claiming the whole country. This is a diorama of Onawe Peninsula, which is a volcanic plug inside Akaroa Harbour. It is the site of a former Naitahu village. And this diorama shows the European settlers constructing a blockhouse in 1845 to stock with weapons and ammunition. This model here is the Royal Navy sloop called the Fly, which was launched in 1831. It carried out survey work in New Zealand, and the ship also visited Akaroa several times to negotiate the purchase of the land from Naitahu. This part is about the settlers. Settlers used farming tools such as a plow to harvest and barbed wire to build fences to keep the cattle in the same place. There's also equipment for dairy products like the milk separator shown here. In the 1860s, there were about 30 local dairies in Akaroa. And that is grain scales and other machines used for cox footing, which is the most persistent pasture. The sea around the Banks Peninsula supplied rich seafood, including whale products. Whaling was an important industry for Europeans in New Zealand. And right there is the wooden post box. This part shows how people used to communicate back then. And that telephone mountain on the wall is from the 1940s, which used to be at a doctor's home in Akaroa. And look at the manual telephone exchange. I wonder how many operators were sitting at these switchboards. Yeah.
And this is a bed from the early French settlers in Akaroa who arrived in 1840. The timber of this bed is made with totara. This bed is one of two pieces of surviving furniture known to have been constructed by the 1840 migrants to Akaroa. Now I just stepped out of the museum to check out the Akaroa's oldest house. This house was built in the early 1840s. It has two rooms, quite common type in the colonial era. One room for living and cooking and the other for a bedroom. The loft above was used for sleeping and storage. So this was built by the French, so the house is French in style, just like the French built wooden colonial homes in New Orleans. And the house was built with New Zealand native timbers. There's a wardrobe in the corner with a door, which is probably original to the house, but may not have always been in this place. There's another room opposite from here, and in this room there's a wallpaper at the corner, which is from the 1960s. You can also see a fireplace in this room, which is actually not original to the house. It was built from late 19th century bricks and was installed when the house had a makeover in the 20th century. And there used to be a stair or ladder to the loft in this room. The house was owned by several families until in 1960, Akaroa bought and declared this house a National Historic Reserve. The French did give a big influence on Akaroa, as you can still see today, all the street names and places in Akaroa are in French. From the museum, you can also walk outside to see the courthouse, which is another heritage building. This courthouse has one of the oldest histories in Canterbury, and opened in March 1880. Inside the courthouse, you can still see a magistrate's bench, witness boxes, and dock. Okay, so let's go and have a look inside. So to the right here is where you can see how the court records were kept and organized. The majority of court magistrates and clerks who used to work at the Akora court back in the 19th century did not have formal qualifications nor quiet and sober habits expected in their roles. And over here you can see the different types of warrants in each pigeonhole, such as a distress warrant, which was a warrant to seize property. And now I'm actually entering the courtroom. The interior of this room is still furnished as a courtroom. And inside this room, they were also playing a documentary on the Banks Peninsula. So I'm going to finish here uh, with my tour at Akaroa Museum. Let me know in the comments what you guys have thought. As always, I will give a rating to the museum. I quite enjoy my visit to the Akaroa Museum. There's a lot to take in. You can learn a lot about the history of Akaroa and there are more parts that I didn't include in this video. So I'm giving a 3 stars to this museum. Also, the heritage buildings give you a glimpse of colonial era which add to the whole experience. The museum doesn't have a cafe, but there are plenty of places to eat and have a coffee in Akaroa. They have nice fish and chips, French restaurants and bakeries, and of course a winery. 
I absolutely recommend visiting Akaroa for a day from Christchurch and enjoy the rich history at the museum. If you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I'll see you guys in the next video. If you like my video, please don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.